yes. that we may be all that you intend for us to be. Amen. Thank you in advance, O oh Lord, for the outpouring of your spirit, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for speaking to the hearts of your people, Lord, and making a difference and bringing deliverance. In yes. Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 Uh, we want to continue today to talk from the, the topic uh, of joy. We've, we've been discussing joy in the life of the believer in the church. And I know that as, as Christians, oftentimes we, we feel some of the, the weight and the stresses and the pains and the challenges that are around us. Mm -hmm. uh, but even as we go through these things, God wants us to be able to enjoy his presence. Mm -hmm. and, and so oftentimes it becomes very, very difficult, especially when we're struggling with something to, uh, to have joy. And, and so one of the things I want to talk about this morning is entering into his joy. Uh, because some of us have not entered into his joy. Uh, we, we're in another place. We're in another space. But God is inviting us uh, to partake of something with him. And, and so I, I think the scriptures, without a doubt, give us a, a clear indication of something that will bring us more in line with God. Uh, something that will, will help us to to lift the burden of a frustration. And, and, and specifically, the, the message today is called Enter Into His Joy. Enter his, Into His Joy. And the scripture will be taken from Matthew, the 25th chapter, 13th through the 15th verse, and then I will skip down to the 23rd verse. The 13th through the 15th verse will be in the NIV, and the 23rd verse will be in the King James Version. And the reason that I've done that is because of the language that's used in the King James Version in terms of rendering the word joy versus rendering the word happiness. Both of them have the same Greek root. But here begins the reading of God's holy word. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey, who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one, he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, and to another one talent, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. Skipping down to verse 23. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. In this text this morning, Jesus is talking to the multitude. And whenever Jesus would teach, Jesus would teach in parables. And these parables, oftentimes, they were natural phenomena or natural things that were describing spiritual things. And what we see here specifically in this text, Jesus is talking to the people about the kingdom of God. But even when he ministered in parables, the Bible says that the people that they would hear and they may not understand. And that they would see, but not necessarily perceive 
or understand. And so, whenever we get into God's presence, we got to go beyond seeing. We got to go beyond hearing. And we've got to get to the point where we understand what God is speaking and saying to us. Because only after you understand it, can you apply it. Only after you understand it, does it become significant and relevant to your existence. And so the Bible says that in all you're getting, you better get an understanding. And so God has given us the Holy Ghost to lead us and to guide us into all truth. So you don't have to be ignorant, but you can understand what's relevant with God. And so here Jesus is speaking of a story. And this story has direct emphasis concerning the kingdom of God. That which will be, that which we cannot see. And here in this story, he begins to talk about a master who had left his servants money. Depends upon which version you take a look at it. If you look at it in the NIV, it says talents, like King James Version. But in some of the newer translations, it may say bags of gold, bags of silver. The first thing that you got to realize, though, it was an investment. Mm -hmm. And whenever you make an investment, mm -hmm. you're not just doing it for no reason. Mm -hmm. But you're doing it because you want to grow something mm -hmm. into something greater. Or if it's hardly nothing, you want to create something. Mm -hmm. That if you're giving something for an investment, you want it to grow. You want it to mature. You want it to build. And here what we see is that God is leaving an investment. And I want you to know God has made an investment in each and every one of us today, those of us that have accepted Christ. And God wants a return on his investment. God has given us gifts. He's given us talents. He's given us abilities. But God wants us to do something with them. It's not enough just to have it, but you've got to use it. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. That God wants us to utilize what we have in order to transform, to create a metamorphosis in our earth and these surroundings by the power of God being manifested in us through us, all around us. He's gifted us for a purpose. That's right. For a purpose. He has a plan. Mm. And you are a participant in the plan. Amen. And so, the first thing that you need to keep in mind is that God is holding us accountable. Mm. He's holding us accountable. And whether or not you and I live until he comes, that does, that's not the big, big question. Whether or not I see him in time or see him in, in eternity is not the big question. Mm -hmm. But the question is, how have I been spending my time? Mm. What have I been producing in my life? Mm. What I've been doing with this glory that's inside of me. Mm -hmm. I want you to know he's coming to us or we're going to be going to him. And so According to your ability, if you look at this text in the 15th chapter, the Bible, the 15th verse of Matthew 25, it says, to one he gave five talents, to another two talents, and another one talent, 
each according to his ability. I want you to know that each and every one of us, we're not the same. Right. We're different. God didn't give five talents to the one that only should have had one talent. And God's not going to give you what you don't need to fulfill your calling. That God equips you with whatever you need to accomplish whatever he has planned for you. Mm. He gives you according to the calling. Mm. And you might be wondering, how do I find out what my talent is? How do I find out what my, my gift is? How do I find out what my calling is? Since God is going to be holding me accountable to this. Well, if you don't already know, then you need to ask somebody. God has ministry tools in his church. That there are preachers, that there are prophets, that there, there are teachers, that there are pastors. God has placed them there in the body for the perfecting of the saints and the work of the ministry. And so you might need to ask somebody to help you. Now notice I said help you and not choose for you. Right. I want you to realize in the Old Testament whenever God was speaking to an individual about something and he sent the prophet the person who was the recipient of the message already knew or understood what the prophet was saying to them. There was a connection. Whether it was bad or good, if you remember the prophet David, well, actually David, David was the ancestor of Jesus in terms of the lineage that was bought through Mary and Joseph on both sides. And David, even though he was a man after God's own heart, you find that that didn't make him perfect. He still had problems. He still had situations. And when God dealt with him sometimes, God sent a prophet his way. When David, when he sent with Bathsheba, he sent Nathan. And Nathan, Nathan he, he told him a story of two men. One of the men had a, a sheep that was near and dear like a daughter to him, and the other was a rich man. And in the way, the rich man took advantage of the poor man, and essentially what happened was David found out that he was the man that did wrong in terms of his slaying of Uriah because he wanted Bathsheba. And so when Nathan came to him, he already knew what Nathan was talking about. He knew he was in the wrong. He knew he had created harm. Mm -hmm. When God began to speak to Pharaoh, he said, he said Moses, his prophet. Mm -hmm. All right? Pharaoh already knew that he needed to let God's people go. Mm -hmm. And all throughout the scriptures, you're going to see people that are, that are prophets, people that are, are speaking on behalf of, of God that are ministering to others. You'll see that even with Jeremiah. Jeremiah spoke to King Zedekiah. He spoke to also uh, jo Jehoiakim. And so what I'm saying is that when you're going to get help with understanding where you need to be in God, there should be, there should be a connection. There should be a, a revelation in terms of it's not somebody telling you what you should, should do, but it's a confirmation of what you need to do. 